Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Amplet Surfari. This board features Amplet's cruise camber, which is a very mellow directional cam rocker, so you got a predominantly camber section with a small amount of early rise in the nose. Basically, you're gonna get that load snap pop of traditional camber, and then when the board's loaded up, it's gonna hit that early rise, which will just give you a slight ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as slightly more optimal powder float. This board is available in 157 and 161. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin on a day that had overcast skies with pockets of blue, moderate winds at time, there was fresh snow off the runs, a light dusting on top of it, perfect corduroy, sometimes firm corduroy, little bit of chunder, some ice, wind loaded heavy powder areas, and other areas where it had just been completely blown off, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. The overall flex of this board is just past middle of the road in the free ride spectrum. You do have a directional flex to it, which means a slightly softer nose that stiffens up right outside the front binding pack and stays consistent to right at the rear binding insert pack, then it stiffens up again. There is a fair amount of torsional flex, but it's not crazy overwhelming. And when it comes to stability, this board just crushes through everything in its path. You can just charge and not worry about it. Any chatter that you do get in the nose is completely dead by the time it would hit that front foot. So it just doesn't resonate back. In really rutted out terrain, this board stays on top of everything. It doesn't get knocked around. It stays stable and consistently smooth. This board has snap, but you are gonna have to load that camber up and you're gonna have to aggressively load it up. So just be aware that you're gonna be putting a lot of downward pressure into this board to get that rebound out of the camber, but when you do, it's gonna be able to boost for you. What's nice about this board compared to other amplets in this category, you can actually butter this thing. Sure, it does have that early rise in the nose and that helps a little bit, but what you really wanna do is get your weight way out towards that front contact point and really muscle it. You're gonna feel it fight you the whole time. So be aware that on the tail, go as fast as you can, lean back as hard as you can and just do a wheelie. It's not really what this board's designed for, but you know, someone will wanna do it. So I went and did it and it's possible. So there you go. This board, is quick and nimble edge to edge with a fluid and smooth transition, which is pretty much characteristic of every amplet I've been on so far this year. What you will notice is that you steer it almost out at the upkick to the tip, so right where that end of that camber zone is, and then as you transition it back through, it brings it back in a little bit more outside that front foot, and then you're actually able to drive it from the back foot in, so you're doing a lot of center flexing on the board that's gonna change that dynamic of how you slingshot it in and out of turns, how you power it through, and with that torsional flex, you're able to ankle steer when you are on edge, this is a board that does feel locked in when you get it on edge and it lets you know that it's gripped and you don't have to worry about anything. The anti-phase technology in this board does take over, so it helps dissipate any of that chatter that you would feel on edge. It just gives it more of a smooth and stable ride. Short, tight, quick turns, long, hard, drawn out carves, deep Euro carves, it can do them all with ease. This is a board for just crushing corduroy, ripping hard turns, and it still doesn't suck when you get into fresh snow. There is a little bit of 3D shaping in the nose, which does help with its turning as well as its powder float. Just thought I would mention that for everyone. Who's this board for? The all mountain free ride guy that wants one board to rule them all. This deck is super fun to ride. It just crushes through just about any type of terrain in there. It's super stable and smooth. You got good edge control. There's still enough torsional flex that when you get into tight trees, you're not manhandling the thing. The pop is there, but you do have to aggressively load it up. Overall, this thing is great. And as I mentioned earlier, you got that 3D shaping in the nose, which really does help funnel out pow when you get it into wide open terrain. Don't, don't sleep on this board. Just, just don't sleep on it, trust me. Comparable boards, the Telos DST, the Rome Stalefish, the Jones Flagship. Fighting recommendations, the Burton Cartel, the Rome Katana, the Ride A8. 
This has been my review of the Amplet Safari. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.